Y2K, year 2000. I did, there was no date on this until I finally found a, a copyright in the back. So, Is it focus, motherfucker. There we go. See? So, this is, uh, I don't want to say this is their first catalog, because I, I remember seeing them back in 98. But this is the first one I got. There you go. Pretty girl. Believe it. I don't know what that means. There we go. There's the high current monsters you love. Oh, that's right. I think I got this from uh, m, m Merchandisers out of Texas. So this was their price on this. And they also carried what was called Digital Audio, uh, which was the same equipment but branded under their brand. And th that was their house brand for uh, for m, m Merchandisers. So, And that's the dealer pricing on those which is still expensive, considering that the, this is all Class AB. Which is, you know, what what's really expensive is all this shit, this chrome. And these came in like, you know, tissue paper and wooden crates and all that kind of stuff, you know, which was, uh, it's a good gimmick. Because you guys, you guys fell for it. <laughs> you guys, uh cherish these amps like they're gold and it's just it's cheap Chinese chrome man Chinesium not that it's bad it still performs the same it's just that you know these are class AB they get hot that's why they have the fan built into them <clears throat> so there's a little four channel $166 dealer price that's insane but these were definitely beautiful, very good looking amplifiers. Uh, that's the one channel E series. That's their little, uh, the bass boost. Is that the one the bass? No, that's just the line driver. LOC. Is it an LOC? I think it's an LOC. And then uh, this was the one I liked. But not for $77. Jesus Christ. Dealer price. Well, what, what it does show you is that, you know, they were able to get away with that. So, because, you know, when you're selling this for $150, what, why do you care about it if it's $65? You know what I'm saying? So, and that's what you're supposed to do as a dealer. But they didn't have any distribution. And so they would use a, a, a wholesaler like Eminem. Look at all that. You can replace all that with a, a DSP. $50 DSP, $100 DSP. $143 for an equalizer. That's crazy. $15 cost on that. <laughs> and they're dealer pricing it at $100. So they're probably selling it to... Uh, they were probably selling it to Eminem for probably right around sixty dollars, maybe even fifty dollars, and they split it with them. So there's a lot of margin on these, especially when you're ordering direct from China. Here's what you really like. Here you go. Let's see. Fat EPDM rubber surround. It wasn't rubber; it was foam. But I guess you call it foam rubber. Uh, AWP series. Still very expensive. Big looking motors. A lot of these only had, uh, no, these have three inch. These are three inch coils. This, these are the four inch coil versions, which aren't any better, but they just, they handle more abuse. These are the ones I liked, the Alum, and then the later on they called them the Q series. And then this series, the AW1500, that was really good too, three inch. Six hundred RMS, so it's like a, TC7. So, and then this is the stamp frame version. And then the really low end. Still very nice. Really good pricing on those. That's uh, that's some. Uh, again, this is from 2000. This is, oh, this is what 20, 22 years ago. They use a cast frame, as if that's, I mean, you, you get a little better power handling, just because it can disperse the heat better. Or, again, 
that has more to do with abuse than it has to do with uh, uh, loudness. That one looks really good. 100 watts RMS. Mm. Maybe with a high pass filter. Definitely not full range. Look at that. Swivel tweeter on the 4x10. For you Monte Carlo owners. Old Monte Carlo. Like 80, 88 Monte Carlos. And some Cadillacs. I think you also use 4x10s. I bought a lot of these. I would sell them for 100 bucks. These are just their standard ones. Look at that. Isn't that funny? They'd sell the 5x7 and the 5x7 converter plate as if... I don't know. So I, I, it was funny. Some I think there was a review or something like that that was talking about how the sound waves that are produced by a oval speaker are different than those of a round speaker, and that is not true. Uh, the propagation is different, but in, in a small environment like a car, it doesn't fucking matter. So, <laughs> but, you know, they, they put these audiophile type of um, super scientific tests on something that's going to be used in a car. It's, it's totally dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. What does it go down to? 150 hertz. So you'd cross it up at 300 hertz. One octave up. Very nice capacitors. <clears throat> These look familiar like the uh, Fusion stuff that we saw. Same same bars. Those might have been from... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it was called Edge back then because... This is right during the time of um, lightning audio, uh, you know, era. These I really like too. These were nice. Again, they're very affordable. Uh, that's still high. I'm sure China cost on these was probably right around thirty dollars uh, a pair. The tweets. I think they made one. Yeah, this is the good one I liked. Where is it? With this one or this one? One of them, yeah, it was this one. So it probably has a 1K uh, FS, and then so you can cross it up at 2K. And then, of course, to, for better power handling, they would uh, cross it up at like 5 or 6K. And then all the bandpass boxes. So many bandpass options. What, what are you going to do? I like this one. The triple... I like I liked it because it was a it was a vinyl wrapped top if I remember right, and then I liked the the grills on it too. That one's got the VU meters built into it. Is that one powered? That one no, it is not. Maybe this one is. No, but it would have VU meters in it. That's cool. So, so that the. Uh, the, the sex slave that you uh, captured uh, and is hanging in your trunk can see the VU meters. Because <laughs> that's the only people that's going to see that thing. So dumb. Uh, empty boxes. Again, I really like these because of the vinyl wrapped cover. Just look nice. And then wire. 8 gauge kit, $24. Wow. Do, 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 do. And then wire by the spool. Getting down to the accessories. Some of the accessories were cool. Here's the prices on the RCAs. That's about what I sell the recoil stuff for now. We sell 20 foot for 10 bucks. So, because it, it doesn't cost that much, especially from when you're buying direct, like, you know, recoil, edge, you know, those guys. And everything was, uh, these, were, these were, I remember these were one of the first guys to come out with the nickel plated. As if nickel plated was a premium. Oh, that's right. Uh, Lightning came out with that too. They would call it platinum covered, even though it wasn't platinum. It was just nickel. Um, but they made it seem like it was uh, that gold was like tacky and gaudy and just kind of like you know for dirty minorities. And then uh, <laughs> the silver, <laughs> the silver is for the pure. <laughs> For good Mormon boys and stuff like that. Uh, righteous uh, Aryans. <laughs> that is the 2000 Audiobond catalog. So awesome. Love you guys. Talk to you tomorrow.